Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 12 of Posties in DC. It's crazy how we only have four more weeks left. Pretty much. Pretty much. I'm That's here. weird. I'm here with our usual co host, Claire, but we're also here with a special guest, Ian Kirby, who is also part of our program cohort. And today we're going to talk a little bit just about his experience in DC, about his experience living in our building. And we're going to answer some of the questions that you guys sent to us directly. So, Ian, thank you so much for coming back on. Thank you for having me. Ian was on the sports episode that I was not in. <laughs> so he, he's kind of used to being here with us, but we didn't do a special episode to just talk about his stuff because we just talked about all about sports in that episode. So we were like, he'll come back. He'll come back. And then back when we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do with Ian, we were like, okay, why don't we just ask some questions like let's just get random questions that maybe like we didn't have we didn't think of them or we haven't answered them already um and so we kind of just asked around and we got a bunch of questions that we're going to answer but first we're going to do highs and lows would you like to start us off ian what was your high um all right so my high is i go into work and i'm just given a bunch of stuff to do right off the bat because we're now back in session after a six week recess so with the congresswoman coming back there was a lot of stuff to kind of do just before she got in later in the afternoon and was able to get everything done that was a good feeling yeah. so starting, starting off, off the week strong slay that's kind of a slay go off claire sorry i might, i was i was gonna burp anyway <laughs> We're good. Um, my high is like, I'm really excited because I've been trying to make a bunch of connections. I started off, we started off like making a connection like every single day, like three a day because of our classes. And then I kind of dropped off because I was kind of getting into my internship and everything. And then I started to pick up a little bit, but then elections hit. And elections just take up all of your time and everybody Mm -hmm. else's time. And, like, anybody you would contact or email would not get back to you just because everything. But now that elections are over, I was able to, like, reach back out to those people and be like, Hi, elections Mm -hmm. are over. Um, Do you want to connect? And I've, like, I have, like, some coffee set up. Like, I'm going to go meet some people. Which can be, I know, slay. Because, um... It might lead to, like, if I want to come back to D.C., I can get another internship or get a job later. So I'm really excited about that. So that's that's my high is setting those things up and seeing seeing what falls. But, Hannah, what's yours? I'm going to meet my, my senator tomorrow, the senator that I work hey, for hey, tomorrow, hey. because nice the Senate is back in section. So she's going to be here. I, I'm very excited. We're going to take pics, and it's going to be like a whole meet and greet, which I'm very, That's very excited for. That's going to be so for. fun. Um, so this this will also be the pictures that everybody sees on social media when I'm allowed to announce, LOL, which I worked for this senator, um, which is dope. Ian, what, what, is your, what is your low for the week? My low is that it is now dark and cold when I leave oh, work. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Because it... Have you guys noticed that it gets darker so much earlier here than in Ohio? Is it I feel earlier like. here? I like. It feels like it's earlier. I feel it, like it's earlier here, but I feel like I'm making that up. Like I no, feel like I'm like, making it up. I, I know at home, like, around this time, it starts getting dark, like, at least before like six. But yeah. here, it's like I get off at five, and it was like, d- like the dark. sun was like gone. I know. I feel like it might. But, like, I, like, I don't know. Like, it feels like it's more, but maybe I'm wrong. But I know what you're talking about because it gets dark so early. Today, this is kind of a funny story, and I'm kind of going to go on a little tangent just because it's really funny. Um, I was making phone calls today. Um, we're trying to get, like, different counties to know how many, like, outstanding votes they still have. And, like, so we know when we can start really projecting those really, like, key races that we still haven't called yet. Mm-hmm. And I was making calls to Colorado, New Mexico, and California, which is two hours behind us. Um, at 4 p.m., I did this multiple times. It was not just one time. At 4 p.m., I was making these calls, and I would say, okay, have a good night. Bye. It was 4 p.m. And so, first of all, it's 4 p.m. I shouldn't be saying that in our time zone, let alone that it's 2 p.m. for them. And I just (laughs) said, have a good night. I was like, please. I'm getting so thrown off by the fact that it's so dark out here. I mean, it's close enough. It's close enough. It's 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 a good evening. I would say good evening. Yeah. Yeah. 2 p.m. is when the world should shut down anyway, huh? (laughs) We should just pull it in. Wrap it up then. Hannah, what's your low? 
Oh my god. Um. So I had a panic attack. She this had week. trauma. I had, she had trauma. I had a lot of Spill trauma the tea. because my computer just decided to shut down and not charge and not come back to life. So really? scary. Well, yeah. And then I had to explain to my boss. Thankfully, I was not working like in office, like in the office, or like I needed to do anything that day. But I did have to switch around some shifts and be like, hey, I'm really sorry. Like, I am picking up a new laptop. So I got a brand new laptop, which I guess is also a high. But my low is that I had a panic attack to get said laptop. Right. Um, so rip her. Yeah. And also rip the bank again. <laughs> um, yeah. Because I did not want to get a new laptop soon. But yeah. we're here. She's thriving um the new 2022 macbook pro is recording this podcast so we're gonna we're gonna see about her she's making it work claire what's your low um my low is i had a little bit of fomo um because the past two weeks so i'm the vice president for ohio university society professional journalist or ouspj and the past two weeks i've actually been the one to plan and organize the events that they're having. Um, each exec board takes a turn and like puts on different ev- different events. And I planned the last two, but I didn't go because I can't. I- I've tried to attend events online, but it's really odd um, because you can't always hear that well. And it's weird to have one person on a computer and nobody else's. And we've just figured out it's probably just easier that I, I will attend the exec meetings and I'll like hear about the meeting and how it all went, but I usually don't go to them anymore, which is sad. Yeah. Um, and like, it's really hit me in these past few weeks because I just had an event happen um, this past Monday and the Monday before that, that I was really excited for, but I couldn't actually be there for. And I had to like pass it off. Like I wrote the questions all out for this past one and I gave it back and I keep, I got multiple times text for this past one being like there were 30 people there it was great and I was like yeah yay but I can't actually be there so like it's a little sad but like we only have a month left so I kind of need to like just get over myself Mm -hmm. because we only have so much time here left I'll be back in the spring I'll get to go to those events and we'll have even better ones so I'm kind of sad about it but like it's okay it's okay so here's the thing Ian you said congresswoman so what's that about why are you in dc what's your internship congresswoman yeah. what's that so i i guess i'll start off with why i'm in dc um gosh where do i where do i start? why did you why did you when you saw the semester in dc pop in your inbox <laughs> why did you decide, why did to, you click decide to click on it um i don't know it just seemed like a good opportunity to you know kind of knock out I guess having a semester abroad. I know mm-hmm. I'm not abroad, but I'm out of Athens, so that counts You're for abroad. something. I would, count, like I would count this Some as abroad. Some people are like, "You're not actually abroad." I'm like, "Okay." We're 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 in a I different. Would count this is abroad. There is a big enough culture shock at the beginning. That There's a big enough culture shock, and when you tell people here that you're from Ohio, you still get the same weird look that you would get yeah. if you said yeah. <laughs> you're from yeah. Ohio. You're from America in a different True. country. So um, <laughs> that's a thing. Yeah. So it's that. Um, I know there's a lot of opportunity for publication design and information graphics in DC and the market here, Um, as well as I know. um, Because that's your major. Yeah. Yep. In your what's your your minor is in marketing. Our advertising and PR. Okay. So okay, okay, okay. I like to just kind of say strategic communication. True. Um, True. But yeah. um, Your internship. Yes. So. through the help of um, one of the program directors, I was able to land the internship with um, Representative Marcy Kaptur in her office as a basic congressional intern. So I've been doing that since our classes have ended, which has been a blast. I love it. The office is awesome. I'm like um, Hannah, you can actually say who it is. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Be yes. a little more open. I don't under... Can you guys explain to me why people who work for Congress people can, like, just, like, say it, and then people who work it's, in the Senate can't? It's only... It's actually certain... It's not Congress offices? and Senate. It's specific offices. Oh. So I know people... Like, we have a person in our building who works for Tammy Baldwin. Mm-hmm. They're openly allowed to say, I work for Tammy Baldwin. Okay. Um, I am not allowed to say it, partly because of... I don't want to say status, but it's sort of kind of status. Maybe. Yeah. Part of it's like security. Mm -hmm. Part of it's like 
we don't refer to you as like an intern when I'm calling like news organizations. Okay. So like like mm-hmm. it's like a whole it's, it's a whole like, thing. It's just better not okay. to say it. <laughs> there, it. That's just kind of the thing because uh, yeah, and I'm yeah. sure there are offices in the house too that are the same way. Yeah, um, there are high. I I know for a fact that there are high profile um, Congress women and men who their offices don't allow mm-hmm. yeah okay. i bet it's it's kind of across the board just certain ones yeah okay. and, then, and then there's good old marcy captor of toledo who's the fourth highest ranking member in congress her she and keeps she keeps she keeps going back at him yeah she keeps roll, coming back roll captor roll captor <laughs> <laughs> she did win re-election and i think people the cards were stacked against her because they did yes. uh redistricting right what? and what? they really thought that the republican candidate would you know topple her after how many yeah. terms has she had do you know uh, off the top of your head sh- a lot. 21 I, 20 or 21 she's either going into t- her 21st or 22nd uh, wait oh. i did not know it was that many actually yeah that's a, 42 that's so years oh my uh, she has to serve one day of her new term and she will be the longest serving women in house history that is crazy. ever that's such a sleigh though well, yeah <laughs> good for her she's yeah. one of like Two or three Democrats in Ohio. I, right. Uh, I thought there, there were five. From Ohio? There's yeah. like five? Um, Chantel Brown. Um, I can't name them all. I'm, there's I can't so many either. races. Um, the district that Akron and Canton is in, which I don't... I can't name. The, I know there's Amelia like Amelia she, I think th- one. Yeah, they took Tim Ryan's spot. Um, I don't remember. Point point being, Marcy keeps yeah. coming back. I, she yeah, coming like what? what, what the yeah, the district her. was what. So how did had, that? How did that all go for you? Like in the office with like. I know uh, you've talked to us about it, but like, what 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 did the job security look like when knowing your congressperson was up for relaxation? Um, and- I was pretty fortunate that pretty early on in my internship, um, our internship coordinator is amazing. Um and she's been such a blessing to work with and but she just reaffirmed that i would still have an internship if we didn't win because there would obviously still be what a month and left in this Mm. in the um 117th congress um so um knowing what's going on now i know how my job would be different Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm I'm very lucky that it's not. Um, but no, I would still definitely have an internship if, even if we would not have won the re-election. I would probably just be doing a lot a lot different. Right. Um, just different stuff. stuff. Yes, a lot of packing. So up. that stuff. Yeah. Can you talk about a little bit what you do because you're you and I have different positions. So yeah. I'm on the communications the press side, and you're actually a legislative intern. Mm-hmm. So kind of explain what you would do to someone who doesn't understand like yeah. the left side. I well. Uh, it's I it's I think my official title is just congressional intern, so it's kind of everything. Where, um, and I'm gonna talk about um, who was it in Steve Dane's office that we I can't think of her name off the top of my head. Sam. Sam yes. Something, something and I can't remember her name. It starts with a W. Yes. Sam. Um, <laughs> but Sam. she she kind of touched on how senate offices are a lot bigger so they have more people to work in comms and in media whereas on the house side these offices are a lot smaller so we have a communications director a legislative legislative director um operations manager chief of staff and then we have the district office which they Mm -hmm. it's kind of similar but more in tune for on a more local level Mm -hmm. Um, but no, like our comms director does like press stuff, um, communications of all sorts. Um, and then our ledge director, obviously we have a lot more legislative staff than anything else in the office. But what do um, you But do? yes, yes, to get to, to, get to that, <laughs> do sorry. What, tell us what um, you do. But I kind of work with all of them. So okay. like, it's honestly like. They come to me with something that they're working on that they need help with. I just do it. Or if I they're not coming to me with something and I'm f- available to do something, I'll reach out. Um, so it's kind of just figuring out um, what the needs are and what's um, being done. 
and I just kind of fill have you a gotten role. to do like the the intro graphic type stuff that you wanted to be yes. here doing? Yes, and that's why, um, because with four hundred and thirty five members and at least ten people who in the DC who work for them, it's kind of hard to. And each diff office is different. Um, so some of them are really good with working with their interns and others just kind of you are set with what um, like you're given a set of responsibilities and that's kind of what you do. But mm -hmm. for me, I've been very fortunate with this office because um, they have been such good listeners with um, not only what I do but and what I can bring to the table, but have also given me an opportunity to kind of grow in my skill set. So I have had the opportunity to do some really cool design work. Um, there was an event in the um, district that the Congresswoman um, had in October that I was able to work with the ledge director to um, create the um, flyer for. Um, they had inf like legislative information like on a one page handout that I was able to stylize and kind of design. Um, and then they also needed um, a digital, um, I guess, um, flyer to like show up on the screen during That's the cool. event. So I got to design all That's that, cool. which is really fun. And I also got um, experience, um, I guess, doing contact research. If, mm -hmm. I guess that's the only way I can really explain. Um, but I just basically looked up organizations in the Toledo area um, who would uh, potentially be interested in um, participating in the event and um, just kind of found their contact information with cool. within the limits, just looking online at the organizations, which was cool to do as well. So I have one more thing I want to hit on before I get to our main Q&A segment. I really want you to tell the story of, I think it was like your first or second week, uh, and you got a certain call oh, right? yes. from an Ohio I, senator. <laughs> uh, Wasn't it? Yeah, was it something I, was else? It Congress? Was, was it, it another um, I, can, I mean, I can say that I've you talked. You can say. So, okay, there are two call stories that oh one God. of them, I'll, I'll tell the Sherrod Brown one because that one's kind that of That one's the one I was <laughs> like, uh. <laughs> Um, this one is, I feel like this one's. there are like so many Hill interns who probably have this experience, but it, it's, I guess. So it, as a ledge intern, you answer the phone. Yeah, sometimes. so that's like the, the main, and I don't like starting off with it because it's, but it's, I guess, the primary like task of the interns is like, we are the like tip of the spear with constituent calls. Like we've been told like, if the phone's not up in the first two rings, like you didn't do your job. Um, right. So but, who called? So <laughs> pick up the phone. Hi, Congresswoman Captor's office. How can I help you? And hi, this is Senator Sherrod Brown. Uh, can I talk to Marcy? Uh, uh, yeah, she was just in the office, sir. Let me see if she's here. P press hold, jump out of my little intern Run. closet. And I'm, I'm, I just book it out to the front. So I go up to our scheduler and I'm like, Sherrod Brown's asking for the con and like she just heard Sherrod Brown's on the phone and then she just she picked booked it, up. it too. She, she, booked it. she, she just, just she just picked it up and was like, Hi Senator, like but the, the it was funny because that was that was the end of my first week. Right. I remember you telling us that yeah. story early on. I was like, no way. That's so cool. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> that was like when we it was like the tail end of um that um session. So mm -hmm. that it was kind of like a final push to get stuff done before the six week recess. And I guess the senator was looking to talk to Marcy and yeah, he, he picks up the phone, do that. Um, our scheduler takes the call, talks with him through whatever. Then she goes and talks to our legislative director and who's project has a very projective voice and is like, wait, who took that call? And she was like, Ian, good job. And I was like, Holy. <laughs> yeah, so. That's so funny. Okay, no. wait, so what's the other call story? Because I, I don't know, know what this other one story. is. You don't know the Ralph Nader story? Mm -mm. No. Okay, this one is like my parents, like I, when I went home for homecoming and like I saw my family over that weekend, they were like, so Ralph Nader, huh? Uh, but yeah, so I get a call. Now, Keep in mind, I have no clue who Ralph Nader is before this call. <laughs> he's, he's 90 years old, something to do with the Green Party, but I don't have a, the 
best most in-depth back, knowledge. yeah, okay, of okay. like politics in the history of politics. So, no clue who this dude is. Pick up the phone, and he just sounds like a normal DC legislative person, like talking super fast. And this is my first week, so like still trying to get used to like trying to take down that all that info while they're speaking so fast. So he's like, "Hi, Ralph Nader is." Courtney Hruska, who used to work in our office in, and I'm like, sorry, sir, she doesn't work in this office. Um, and then he's like, okay, well, is the congresswoman in? Like, I, I don't want to talk to her. And I'm like, no one just directly gets to talk to the congresswoman. I'm like, sorry, sir, she's not in, um, which she wasn't. She was on the floor for a vote. But um, I'm like, sorry, I can pass along a message. Um, he's like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Mentions the, something about the campaign and like funds. And I'm like, which the DC office legally cannot um, do anything about. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I, like I, so I just shut it down. Um, and I'm just like, sorry, sir. And um, at the beginning of the call, I forgot to mention, like he's like says hi and names Ralph Nader, and, but he went super fast. So I'm like, sorry, can you like repeat your your name? And I like, I was like, how do you spell your last name? And like oh, he started no. to get annoyed, <laughs> and then like he goes into the campaign, can't help him there. So he's just like continuously getting frustrated, um, and then. Did he do a? Can I ask for the manager? He no it, yes, but it gets better. Oh my gosh! Um, okay. So. I'm like, sorry, sir, we can't take campaign, or we, like, can't we work on taxpayer us. dollars, yeah. like, I can't, like, do anything, like, this office can't help you, and he's like, what's your name, and I'm like, all right, you just asked about campaign, I have no clue who you are, uh, like, I'm not telling you my name, like, this is my first week, <laughs> you don't I, have I was the just right. like, yeah, like, and he's like, what, I've been working with, like, politicians and people on Capitol Hill for 60 years and not at once ever has anyone like not giving me their name and I'm like okay like I, I don't care like, <laughs> I'm not I, like I'm not giving I and he's like care. what's your name and I'm like I'm sorry like I'm not telling you that um, he's agitated that I'm not telling him his name and he's like do you know who I am and I'm like uh, oh you my said God. Ralph, I guess. Uh... And I'm like, no, like I I didn't say no, but he's like, uh, basically to and the because that's basically the end of it. But he was just like, you should really Google me and talk to your superiors after this. <laughs> I'm like, okay, goodbye. Hang up the phone, go out, talk to. I like tell the other intern who's um, a poli sci major. Ralph Nader just called and he's like wait and but and he's like oh gosh okay so then i go out and talk to our one of the staff assistants and they didn't put two and two together on who ralph nader was until our legislative director came out and she was like wait the ralph nader called and you like were and i like you like shut down and i was like yeah he was talking about the campaign and they're like okay that, that like i guess so i when the, when i heard that reaction i went and looked him up and was like oh founded basically founded the green party and the green movement right yeah but yeah. then then you look at the dates of like when he was last like of prominence in the political scene and it was like 2008 election or whatever and yeah, i'm just it's like been a while. It's i was i was anymore. six like you don't yeah i feel like sometimes it is funny because i feel like people in our offices probably assume we know things b before obama and a lot of the times i'm like if it's before obama no. i'm not gonna know because the thing was i right. was a freshman in mm -hmm. high school when trump was elected yeah and i probably didn't really become politically aware until my junior year of high school so that was two years after trump was elected so really i didn't really pay attention to politics yeah. that much until i was at least a junior in high school and i think they forget that sometimes they're like you yeah. don't know blank and i'm like i mean now i'm gonna know blank but i didn't have a reason to know blank before so you yeah. know, I get it. But we got to get into these questions. Right. So we're going to get into the questions that were sent in by you guys through all of our social medias. So the first one that we got was, how often do you see political figures in public? The answer is not that much for me. It happened yeah. to me once. Not I feel like you guys might have more experiences just because you're around the, the offices. Um, but I... Not really. Not, not on the house side. Again, we just were in a six week recess so they aren't they just weren't here mm -hmm. um there were also a lot of people were out campaigning so it's like they're in their home states yeah, campaigning right. they're not going to be here mm -hmm. 
Um, but who knows? I mean... You might pass people and not even realize it here. It's just one of those things. Yeah. I mean, I saw my home congressman. I passed him before. Um, but no one, like, super big. Like, even though Pelosi's office is, like, in the rotunda, mm -hmm. and, like, it's supposed to be, like, oh, like, you can see her. Like, even then, like, not really. And I know the all the high-ranking officials, I don't even know where their office building is, but it's not in any of the buildings that I yeah. right. I mean like I don't really see my office is kind of squared off it's it's near enough that I can walk to the capital mm -hmm. or whatever but I'm not that close to like the actual capital um we haven't had any big political figures come in when I'm working now do big political figures come into our office yeah but like even if they did I probably wouldn't be able to talk about it because it's probably confidential for one reason or another mm -hmm. but I don't really think I've seen many and if I did I probably just didn't realize it because there's just so much going on Right. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But who knows? There's still, what, two weeks? Three we weeks? Still three weeks. I'm, the still first weeks. day I saw the Norwegian Prime Minister. That that's about true. all I have to say. You saw the Norwegian Prime Minister. And I didn't. I, you, I, if you had told me that in any other sense of, like, who is this man, I would not have been able to tell you. Someone literally had to point him out to me, and security had to push us aside because we were just taking a tour. They're like, dude, no, but like, he's coming through. You know, when our roommate, who's probably going to be on our podcast soon, she has met some crazy political yeah, figures. Right? Yeah. She has met some crazy political figures. And when she's on, she can tell you all about that. And we're not going to tell that, her stories for her. I, I, but I, she I, has yeah. met political figures. <laughs> she's got the stories to tell there. But us, on the other hand, not so much. Right. But that's okay. Not yet. We still have time. Still so time. the next question that we have is, which museum is the best? I feel like I haven't been to enough of them still. I feel like I there's still a like major at least mm -hmm. five for me that I'm like I need to say the, I need to go to these ones still mm -hmm. that I really want. I would to. say like Portrait Gallery is up there for me. The National that Portrait cool. Gallery that was really cool. I the the one that I've been to, I African American Museum was pretty cool. Did you go to that one? Yeah, we're still trying to go to that one. Yeah, that one was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, very eye opening, and it's huge. It's like way bigger than like it looks from the outside. I um, think, mm, I think the American Indian Museum was kind of cool. I think they called the American Indian one. Museum. They should have called maybe the name. They should have the name of American Museum. Right. But I'm pretty sure before that was like the politically correct term, and they already had named it American Indian. I don't really know the history and why it's called what it is. But the museum's really cool. I went with my sister, who is very interested in that topic, and she's uh, an environmental science major. Um, and she's really interested in indigenous studies. So she also, as we were walking through, was telling me all these things mm -hmm. as we went. I'm like, girl, I can read it, but like, thank you for telling me. Yeah. <laughs> but it also was, very, it was another one of those museums that's very eye opening because I feel like you don't get mm -hmm. taught about a lot about it when you're in school. And like the fact that you could see all those different um, materials there was just really cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was probably my favorite. One that I still want to go to it that I know you guys did was the Hirshhorn Museum. That one looks really I, cool. That one was cool. I liked it. It's smaller. I a, a lot of museums right now are renovating, mm -hmm. which like sucked. always like, happens. I, it, the, like half of it was closed. So Hirshhorn like is like, like mostly better. closed right now. Tbh, but mm -hmm. it was but still cool. It. Yeah, it was still nice. So you can make a. That's a quick one that you can go do, and they have right. the statue garden outside. So you want to go before it snows. Or yeah. Something. <laughs> because right. you want to see that. Next question we have is: How did you navigate the train system, and is DC really walkable? <laughs> it's walkable if you're like smart about it. Right. Yeah. You probably it's walkable if you're smart about it you can't really walk it during the night because that's not a safe thing and you to should do. yeah you shouldn't even try to but yeah i would i would agree that like dc is pretty walkable yeah um i think our location especially because we are so close to the to hill our offices yeah and, like you like everybody here walks to work which i think is we're really fortunate to do mm -hmm. um i also think a lot of companies out here if we weren't would reimburse yeah my was, company uh, has like a uh, funds if i needed to take a car home and stuff like that and that's what i did on election night when i worked election night because it was like 3 a.m mm -hmm. and that's not safe to walk home. yeah and they had funds to be able to send me in an uber back it's honestly place. like better to walk like i couldn't imagine like you would definitely have to take extra time to find parking in the morning or like right. mm -hmm. it, you would definitely have to set aside <laughs> funds for like a spot or like a meter so it's and then of gas of course too. Mm -hmm. Even though DC's small, it's still 
be a lot. So I when it comes to navigating trains, though, I mean, like, I don't have a good system for it. If I'm being honest, no, I, I think I've kind of come up with a system for it. Okay, then go through your system. My system yeah, at the I, moment is okay. Me. Blue line or red line? Because we're halfway in between. But I'm like blue line, right. red line. Okay, what is the stop closest to the place I need to go? And then I just make a guesstimate for how long it's going to take me. But that's not a good way of doing it. So I what can, is your system? I think I kind of have a system now. Okay. I think, like, I I know, like, the yellow line is out of the equation because mm-hmm. she's been she's in renovation. Gone. She's so dead. she's gone. Um, blue, silver, and orange pretty much take you to the same place mm-hmm. until you're getting to the last stops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So unless you're truly needing to go to Virginia or you need to go to, like, the outskirts you don't need to worry about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Pentagon City is blue, so, like, that's how I know that. Isn't that green? Am I tripping? Bloop. Tripping. Just kidding. Uh, Pentagon, Pentagon City and Pentagon is blue. Blue and yellow. Blue and yellow. Oh, they s- they right. split in between. But they yellow split, is they, renovated. They split, right. they split out one of those two. Right. Okay, got it, got it, got it. I'm always remembering that green is, like, the top of it is University of Maryland. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And then the bottom half of it is, like... Navy Yard, the wharf okay. yeah, towards yeah, yeah. the water. Yeah. And then I don't really have to worry about like going into Virginia or going into Maryland. This mm-hmm. is just kind of like for yeah. my leisure. But we know like silver goes into like Virginia, Virginia. Yeah. yeah. Like the outskirts of that. So I've been able to navigate it. I think I've done a pretty decent job. I feel like I, I just can get at, to point A to point B in yeah. peace. I usually, whenever I need to go to a certain place, I usually look at that place and then look up metro. And then yeah. the closest mm-hmm. metro stop to there, I figure out how much it takes me to walk to that metro station from the place I'm going. And then the same thing our from our place, our home, to like whichever metro station's closest do I need to transfer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I kind of guesstimate. I'm not great with how long it takes me to get places. So I tend to either leave super early or I know I'm late and I text them somebody being like i'm gonna be probably late right yeah it was nice when we were in classes because it was just like follow claire or whoever had the directions <laughs> right. up that day yeah then we went- figured it out pretty quickly after yeah. classes because we were just going in the same place every day yeah mm-hmm. so it was very like we were just taking the red line like, that was easy and we were going to downtown too which i feel and that's honestly easier like to navigate. Yeah, yeah and that's such a nice way to like start out too because like metro center is like the center of like basically all the the lines right like i mean yeah. or we stopped Besides at like China and, Place, mm, where green. green and yellow that is, and then Metro Center is the next yeah, stop. Yeah, you just kind of mm-hmm. know. So it's like those two are like the two main stops on the red line. You um, get you get into a rhythm of it. You get yeah. used to it. I mean, right. it's not easy to understand at first, but then again, like there's a lot of tools and a lot mm-hmm. of resources to be able to help you understand yeah, it. Yeah, I, I from what I understand, what I understood going into this program from just family who's been out here a lot. Um, is that like the DC Metro is like one of the most like mapped and like has the most sources to like mm, oh if, right. like if you're on the fly you need to know where you're to go like there are a lot of resources to use which is nice but watch out because every single station looks the same from mm, the in- yeah. once you're that in it true. they all look exactly mm-hmm. the same which can be trippy but they're all different so you gotta watch out that but I think that it's not that bad now and it's walkable yeah, yeah, DC yeah. is walkable next question coolest experience so far and favorite part about living in dc this is kind of combined question okay i'll attack it head on coolest experience so far working election night at cnn i mean that just happened for me this weekend that was really cool because how many other people from ohio university get to say i worked in a big time newsroom in the capital on the midterm during the midterms like right. that's cool and then i got to sit in the control room for a little bit and i saw like the directors you know yelling and crap <laughs> i mean i had to leave like that control room is gigantic and it was just cool to like be in that environment um and i got to help out and like um, I was sitting near the decision desk, so all the people that were, like, tracking numbers as they were coming in, they were all, like, you know, s- spitting out numbers, and you just get to, like, be in that environment. It's really cool. So, I think that was my cool, like, cool experience, and I guess my favorite part about living D.C. Ooh. I like, I like the culture. I like that everybody here is very determined and, you know, a go-getter, but also there's a lot of things to do here that are you know culturally diverse and there's just a lot to do that i wouldn't get an experience to otherwise if i was like in ohio so right. those are my there, there's my spiel ian um get at it coolest experience favorite coolest thing. experience um there i guess one 
is one of the first times I met the congresswoman. Um, and I feel like that's right. It's kind of, Marcy's just such an amazing, genuine person that like- Big Marcy guy. Yes. Um, <laughs> like I've, in, I worked two weeks when she was here at the beginning and didn't really know if, we, if I was gonna see her again after like the first one or two times where we were like formally inter introduced. Mm -hmm. um, but there was another time separate of that. She was just going to get coffee and she just like turned that like what what should have probably should have been like a two minute interaction into like a 10 minute like she just mm -hmm. like she took so much time to like genuinely like ask how we were doing and like um and she was just very grateful that we were there to help her um and like learn more about us and what we were doing um so that interaction was very cool because it kind of just puts it in perspective because like i guess i can say this but a lot of the callers who call our office that are constituents um and like talk to us about like certain stuff like they're always like oh like i know the congresswoman like we've talked on multiple occasions like we know i know her personally and like and now you actually believe like it, yes you know. and, and like and I feel like that's different in a lot of offices because I'm sure like a lot of politicians can come off like that but like knowing Marcy like the way that I've gotten to interact with her yeah stuff. like it like it, yeah. it, it I can see that that's like true which yeah, I feel right. like a lot of people on the hill it's not so I would say my coolest experience is getting to be in the Senate building Mm -hmm. I think that's just really cool. And, like, I take the um, underground tunnels to where you can get to all three, which I think mm. is really cool. Right. And then there's the little, like, um, car service that you can take to go yeah. from the House side to the Senate and, yeah. like, back and forth. So I think that's probably the coolest experience is Wait. actually getting to see that. Is there one that goes directly from the Senate? Or it's to the Capitol. And the okay, okay yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. And then you can just walk over to the House side, which I really love. Yeah. Favorite part about living in D.C.? You kind of stole mine with the culture thing. Yeah. I think I really enjoy having the separation of a city and a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I grew up in like a, um, like definitely like a walkable neighborhood. Like you could just walk up the street and then you find like the two, it's almost like a court street kind of thing where mm -hmm. we had like an uptown and you had like, yep. um, like restaurants and like things you mm -hmm. could go to. I really like that we have that here but then we also like you can just walk or you can take the metro and then go deep into like downtown yeah mm -hmm. which is not something i got to do a lot in pittsburgh but so i really really enjoyed that yeah and i oh well i didn't say mine either so i'll kind of i'll make it quick um yeah come on ian going, make it quick <laughs> going off going off of what you guys have said um about like it's also just a young city too. Yeah, there's so, a lot and of like, young people here. Yes, but like to your point, like a lot of the people are ambitious um, and driven, but they're still young, so there's definitely that relatable sense of like you don't know what you're doing really. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, okay it, if you don't. Know yeah, what you're doing. so like I feel very, like also like we're all like very optimistic about like it's okay mm -hmm. if we don't know what we're doing. Yeah, because like I mean I've learned that it's kind of the same way in a congressional office that things change so much. So right, it's, it's kind of nice to come here, but yet it's still very relatable. Mm -hmm. Next one. Next question is, how did you figure out where you were staying? How are you able to afford, like, living expenses? And what is, like, the, our situation? I know we've talked about it a little bit. We've talked so about it a little bit. we can recap it quickly. Yeah. Um, the program provides housing for us. Yeah. So, essentially, we were given this apartment. But this um, was new housing because they had a different yes. company before and they decided this one's better and we agree. <laughs> yes. It's very nice, nice housing. Um, we're paying OU as if we were just staying in a dorm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're curious about how we like a, like pay for this program, like it's added to your student account as if you were just staying in a dorm when you're paying for a meal plan. Give or take, you are only paying for the apartment. Now, Zach and I are kind of lucky to where we're out of state students, so we get waivers mm. Mm. Um, off of our tuition because it's like we're still out of state. Yeah. Um, which is hard and I nuanced and I couldn't even explain yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Um, for living expenses, like food is on our own. I will say for the first four weeks, because we were in classes, we got breakfast and lunch provided for us and through the press dinners, club. I feel like yeah. if, certain like dinners, if our instructors program directors took us out. sometimes would like 
pay for our food one one night or something like that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah and then living expenses otherwise would be like your metro card once you ran out of money because they they put a decent amount of like 140 dollars yeah i'm still using that because i don't take the metro (laughs) i've reloaded mine a few times now guy because i use it so much yeah but i will say like living expenses are just like groceries Mm -hmm. other materials if like your office didn't provide it for you if you wanted to buy more work clothes right um it it wasn't too much i will say living in dc dc is expensive Mm -hmm. um i will budget right Mm -hmm. um i would say like an average grocery trip for me is between like if it's a light trip 20 to 30 if it's like a hefty trip and i need a lot because i ran out of everything closer to 60 I think for me, I only go to the grocery store once a week, once a, once a yeah. week, week and a half. Right. I'm usually somewhere between 50 and 70, I think. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah, and it depends. Sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm, not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so that's usually where I'm around. I uh, usually go once a week, so I try to stock up on the days where I can. Yeah. I feel like you go more frequently than I do. Maybe. Yeah. Which is not a bad thing, because that just means she, she's shopping effectively for what she needs. The, yeah, there are, there are multiple ways to budget and make living in D.C. work, so... Yeah, you just have to make it work for you. You got to remember, like, if your internship's paid or not. Like, I'm lucky right. mine's paid, and yeah, I also have same. a lot of support from my parents to help me be in this trip, which I'm very, very thankful for. Um, and also, I had a lot of scholarships, and because we're here in the fall, a lot of the actual program expenses I was able to get, you know, paid off through my through my uh, my scholarships and things like that. So mm-hmm. you just gotta you gotta think about those things before you get there. But it's definitely possible, and nobody should say like. I can't do it because it's too expensive because it's worth it. And, like, there's ways to get scholarships and there's ways to make it work. Especially now with the housing, like, it's worth what you're paying. Mm -hmm. Like, the the speaker lineup, and I know it varies from um, cohort to cohort, but, like, average, like, from what the other, from people in the previous cohorts have said, too, like, the speakers those first four weeks in the amount of speakers and people you're talking to is so worth it that alone makes right. it really yeah. worth it yeah <laughs> so and it, regardless of what your internship is just the like the first four weeks are worth the money so i would definitely recommend it to anyone so yeah all right last question this is a hard one we kind of saved a hard one for last i kind of like that we saved this one okay this one is what is the hardest thing you had to deal with regarding your internship position not just being in dc because we've kind of talked about like fomo can be really hard right. but what, what is specifically about your internship the hardest thing you've had to do or experience it, i don't know who wants to start here i, I can start <laughs> off because i spent a lot of time thinking about it and i didn't know what i was going to say but then today i just reflecting on it um there are a lot of phone calls where we just because the the dc office it, in terms of constituent calls there's very select things that we can do mm-hmm. so a lot of the times we have to redirect people to other offices or other resources um, or just straight up like there's nothing we can do and it's some to some people that's very frustrating because obviously like like their state representatives like they should be have a pretty wide variety but there are um, a lot of different channels of how that operates that are very specific so um it can be kind of hard to it's the hardest part of the job is when you have to turn down those constituents or try and explain to them when they're not very understanding um of what the what we can and can't do i'm sure um, it can be really taxing when somebody either either one you're getting somebody who genuinely wants help and you can't help them or two you're getting yeah. somebody who's like directing attacks at you as a person and like nobody wants to have to deal with that i, I mean that. that it's getting worse they really take their time out here the ambulance do take their time out here do. Okay, you can respond to what I just said. I forgot what I said. But. Um, shoot, no. I, I said it could be really taxing. Um, yes, yes, but at the same time, like, the people who are over the top, like, it's harder to laugh or to not laugh than to not get mad. So, like, people, like, going in, people kind of, I think, over stress the 
bad like the bad experiences with phone calls because the the bad ones are honestly the it's just like you could you just as long as you keep in mind they're they're not like mad directly at you then it's fine like in the ones that are mad at you just don't know what they're really talking about so um yeah the bad phone calls aren't really that bad it's just the people who you can't really help mm-hmm. that sucks Panda, do you want to go yeah i think the hardest thing that i have had to deal with is maybe lack of knowledge in certain areas. Mm -hmm. I think this is a time where I learn more about policy and learn more about how the government works internally out um, than I probably would have in a traditional classroom setting. Um, I think I was pretty politically aware coming into this, but if you were to come up to me and be like, what are, like, what's the California like race situation? I wouldn't have been able to spit off like yeah. half the information mm-hmm. that I know now because I wasn't looking outwards. I mm-hmm. was more focused on Pennsylvania and Ohio. But the state that I like specifically work for, um, I think I've learned a lot more about their media situation and their politics situation. Mm-hmm. But I think it's hard being in the conversation and not knowing exactly everything that's going on and then having to go home that day and do a bunch of research because it definitely made me feel like I didn't know enough. And I'm sure like table talk too. Just like people just wanting to have fun conversations about things but then feeling like and that being a way a lot of people connect here is just talking about races because everybody is so politically aware and then not being able to like be in that. Yeah, I I agree and I kind of go through that too, but it's kind of fun to learn on the fly like you have to when you're not coming from a strong political background. Yeah. But I mean, it's fine. I I think it, for me, it's, yeah, for me, it's manageable. And I just think it's because our office understands that. So I think they're more, I guess, filtered with how much they throw us off the deep end right into political and ledge stuff so but it's it's fun to still get your toes wet in that regard so yeah claire what is your answer my answer is going to be making mistakes and then immediate imposter syndrome the amount of times i've made a like a silly mistake and then immediately thought i'm never gonna come back here they're gonna fire me they hate me my they think i'm stupid that has happened multiple times and it's something silly that i miss and the thing is the whole point of having this kind of internship then them knowing that they took somebody from ohio they knew going into i've never had a big internship before they knew that they chose me still they you know they wouldn't have chosen me if they didn't think i could do it but every single time i make a mistake i still get very like imposter syndrome like i shouldn't be here i'm so dumb like i don't understand what's going on they're so much smarter than me that being said, both of my producers have been studying elections since they graduated college. They're much older than they're older than me, and they've been focusing on, especially on these races for the past two years, really in depth. You could probably name a state and a district, and they could name both candidates and the situation, especially the key races. Of course, they're going to be smarter than me and they're going to know more and they're going to understand situations better than me. But the point is I'm here to learn that and it's, I think it should be okay if I like make a mistake or don't fully understand. But I will say that's probably the hardest thing that I've had to deal with is like, it's okay if you don't have an answer. It's okay if you make a mistake. It doesn't mean you're a bad person or you're stupid or you're dumb. It just means you're learning. And if mm-hmm. they didn't want you here, they wouldn't have chosen you in the first place. And I think that was my biggest like learning curve, my the hardest part of my position so far. And I think I gotten whispers and warnings about that before like starting an internship like this. I just I didn't know I thought I guess I had a lot of confidence going into it, but then I started really getting into it and I was like, ooh, I <laughs> I'm kinda negative about myself, but like I've also had to like kinda get my hat back on and just be like, you know what? They they chose you, they put you here. It's hard when you make mistakes, but you know you'll you'll get get them next time, and it's okay. So yeah. Um, and of course you have to have your first internship. If you don't mm-hmm. have your first internship, how are you supposed to get a second one? And exactly. you're only gonna learn, and you're only gonna improve. So that's the hardest thing. But to put it on a high note, you're only gonna grow. You're only gonna exactly. get better, and it's okay if you mess up because they they chose you. They choose. Right? They chose and you. They, that's what interns and internships are for is just growth they mm-hmm. like i've i've learned that 
in my, especially in my office, and I'm sure in your guys' offices too, is like they know beforehand when, before they give interns and just us in general like tasks that like they know we're probably going to have questions um, and are probably in some cases going to struggle. So like they know what to expect. Mm -hmm. So is because for me especially because I can kind of get that way too, um, but it's just like. I, I kind of like try and remind myself that when I get yeah. overwhelmed because I'm kind of in the same boat where I like to take on as many tasks as I can for the ledge staffers because and of course you never want to let them down because yeah. you're like oh I let the, that's another thing you don't want to let them down because you're like you trusted me to do this thing and like you believed in me to be able to do this thing and then I feel like I let you down or I didn't fulfill what you had expected of me and so it's really it can be really upsetting but you know, you get them next time. And the next exactly. task you're given, you do it better. And then they're like, okay. And then it's okay. Because I've never had a time where they were so upset with me that they were like, you're benched. You're suspended. That's never happened. <laughs> They've yeah. been like, Claire. <laughs> and then it's over with. But they don't bring it up again. Because they know, you know, you'll get them next time. So, you know. And how would be? That. That being said, thank you so much for listening to episode 12 of Postseason DC. Thank you, Ian. We're thank really you for happy to have you back on here. Yes, it was fun. Yeah, crazy that we only have a few more episodes left, but tune in. Make sure you keep up with Postseason DC on wherever you listen to podcasts and the Post Athens on all social media. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it, guys. Good night. Good boy. <laughs> Done.